<laughs> Welcome to the Up and Adam Show. Uh, Brian Barton paying a big part here. I'm standing for some reason. Uh, Eric Weddle is on the program. Looking forward to talking to Levante David as well. This is the Up and Adam Show. <laughs> We're at the halfway point of the season, baby. Looking uh, ahead and looking forward, of course, to Week 10. Big game in Germany. Lots of NFL media over there. My old NFL media family having the time of their lives. Uh, getting set for what's going to be an insane great game. Is it a turning point for Tom Brady? Bang that table. Drop the F-bomb. They got the win. Wasn't pretty the rest of the game with that final drive. Maybe it turned something around. Talk to Levante David about that. We'll be sharing that uh, throughout the week leading up to that big game over, or the first game ever in Munich, Germany. Uh, we And they've taken on the Seahawks. The Seahawks have been my team of note. I feel like I talk about the Seahawks more than any other team on the show of late. Uh, but you're wondering why am I standing today? I mean, I clearly wore the wrong outfit. Sometimes I completely mail it in. Today is that day. I'm not wearing water shoes, but I'm wearing my bust, my most busted Reeboks classics. I don't know if we have the jib shot. I'm literally wearing wrinkled like track pants. And, uh, and a, a top that I actually really love from uh, Carrie Underwood's brand. You can get it at Dick's Sporting Goods. Whoa! Uh, but here we are, and why I'm standing at this podium that looks like it's straight out of Game of Thrones uh, is because we're gonna do some mid-season awards. You're not even a sports television show unless you pull out mid-season awards and you find that stock award music and you have to have envelopes, which, by the way, if I was giving away awards for MVP, Brian Barton, uh, Taylor and I can't ever say what how do you say Taylor's last name I can never say it few few foo it's few Taylor few it's so easy I thought it was foo Taylor <laughs> few our wizard our goat uh, and of course Mr. McBride who are glue gunning and pasting things because I decided I wanted envelopes at about 6 15 this morning also my computer I would not have a show because we don't have prompter but without you Marissa McBride so this one yes take a bow this one is for you so let's do this halfway through the season no better time to dish out some awards some will of course reward and reflect upon what has happened through nine weeks of action and some will be predictive on what is ahead. I want to know your thoughts, of course, at Up and Adam Show. The first award we're giving out this morning is... The Tom Cruise Award. <laughs> we're doing the Tom Cruise, oh hey, there he is. Where, where has he been, right? So the Tom Cruise Award, what is this? It is an honor bestowed upon someone who embodies his true essence, an icon in the industry, well-respected, hardworking, dedicated, a star, adored. But as time has passed, he sort of maybe went away. I'm not gonna say it's an afterthought. I mean, Tom Cruise is Tom Cruise, but it wasn't his moment. Uh, and then he appears again. A blockbuster hits, a perfect scenario, and he once again captures the world's attention, proving he is an ageless wonder. The Tom Cruise Award this year goes to... Oh, we were Jerome Rome, too. <laughs> oh, Pete Carroll wins the Tom Cruise Award. That's right, the Seahawks season with Geno Smith. This is Top Gun Maverick. That's what it is. Gino is top. Oh, well, I mean, is Gino Maverick or is he? Unbelievable. Halfway mark. Seattle is sitting at six and three. They're atop a division featuring the defending Super Bowl champs and two other playoff teams from last season. So, uh, you think Tom Brady has found the fountain of youth? Pete Carroll looks pretty good out there. How about Pete? He is 71 years young. Yogi Roth, who worked with him at USC, saying he's not surprised at all by the chemistry he has, the coaching philosophy, how seriously he has it, and what is driving him and motivating him, maybe even, like Tom Cruise, is fun. Having fun, doing stunts, uh, you know, doing whatever he wants out there with Gino re invigorated after the Russell Wilson era. So Seattle Seahawks head coach Pete Carroll keep it going against the Buccaneers. Tough sledding over uh, in the land of Lederhosen. <laughs> okay. The next award, what's the next award? The House of the Dragon Award. You could do better, try it again. What's the next award? The House of the Dragon Award. Ah, yeah, Jakar, so we don't have, we don't have, you couldn't get me flames? You couldn't get me a flame shooter? What's happening? Uh, okay, so this award, let's see what this one, what's one is. Uh, <laughs> this is a franchise that is taking advantage of an opportunity to reinvent itself. Legacy is involved. Most everyone uh, is disappointed with the last season of Game of Thrones, but it's come back strong with House, with what? 
House of the Dragon. In the same way, this team has been disappointing for the past six seasons, not just the finale season, but is standing strong here. And the award goes to... The New York Giants. Woo! The New York Football Giants. We need a, cl a laugh track, a clap track, clearly, at the, in the studio. Um, because much like the Targaryens themselves, the Giants have a proud history of tradition, right? It was painful to watch the Giants the last six seasons, right? It's almost as painful as the final season of Thrones. I think there was as much skepticism about the release of Dragons as there was about this giant season, even with Dable. But both have delivered in a big way. And everybody thought that Dable would be ruling over a kingdom of ash and bone, but he has found a way to make this thing work in large part due to the resurgence of his own dragon, Saquon Barkley, looking like Vagar out there as he's torn through defenses. He's averaging, get this, 122 rush yards a game. Uh, so Wink, you know, Wink's got some Damon in him. Are you really watching the show? I think he does. This guy's got some Damon in him, an absolute wild card. And his defense has been going scorched earth on absolutely everyone. I'm sure Eric Weddle will have a lot to talk about when he joins our show with, about that in a bit. Um, and we'll see if the success can continue in the second half of the season. There's no reason to think it won't. I will say, hopefully we don't see any uh, late season curveball developments like Laris pulling a Rex Wyan with the Queen. I'm good on that. You know what? I'm good on that, HBO. I'm just putting my, those are my thoughts, though. Your thoughts, uh, Add Up and Adam Show. Announcer, what's really, really, I want, like, diaphragm, bring it home. What's the next award? Don't Worry Darling Award. The Don't Worry Darling Award goes to the team whose, great job, surrounding drama has been more entertaining than the actual product. The team would kill to get a behind the scenes look at what's going on uh, behind this team. Just like, I mean, this was the story. All the TikToks were about this and the glancing and the drama of it all and the, the videos released and the uh, Vanity Fair article, all of ugh, so much going on there. The spit, this, did this spit happen? Did anybody ever get to the bottom? You think it did. <laughs> More so you would like to think that it happened. Uh, okay, so the winner of the Don't Worry Darling Award is, See how long the track is. Oh, it's still going. The Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> so much drama and insanity going on there. This is a team that had a roller coaster. I mean, did you guys see this press conference? Unbelievable bite by Jeff Saturday. I could run through a wall for him at this point now. Uh, the benching of Matt Ryan, the drama, the firing of Frank Reich, replacing with a former player with no NFL coaching experience. But holy moly if it works out. Holy moly if they are good with him as the head coach. The Ursa press conference talking about building rockets and making sausage. Now, we may not have a spit gate yet in this drama, but this still has absolutely fascinating, uh, and it has been awesome to watch play out. And I just can't wait to see what happens. Now, how about the cast of Don't Worry Darling? Anybody see it? You saw it? Oh, you're yeah. interesting. You're the one. I love that. Uh, I'm kidding. Is it a good movie? It's not. She's a star, though, this Florence. I mean, Jen Aniston told me yesterday in Allure magazine that stars are no, no more. Movie stars, are, but you can't. I mean, I don't know if Flo, Flo quite like that, Jen Aniston. We'll have to talk about that on our next show. Uh, okay, yes, we can't wait to see what happens, uh, and we'll try to see if they're trying or not to. They caught my mic. No, nobody said anything. All right, we have another award to get to, and the next award is... The Doja Cat Award. <laughs> oh, I do love her. Sorry, the Grammys in the bathroom. Fell in love with her. Love her. Okay, Doja. Doja got a lot going on. It's for the breakout star, of course, which she she's beyond that now, of course, shining as much as for their personality as they do for the work that they produce. You know, everything they put on display is going to be hit uh, after hit after hit, and they're always going to find other ways to entertain you in the process. So I would, I'm, not, I'm trying to guess who this award could go to. So who's like the Doja Cat of the NFL? They're, the award is that they're just as entertaining on the field as off. And the breakup part. Thank you, Marissa. What's going on with our prompter? I would love to read these things in our prompter. I'm still efforting. The Doja Cat Award, if Doja Cat doesn't need a prompter, neither do I. The Doja Cat Award goes to, oh, this is a good answer. Sauce Gardner. Woo! Woo! Ow, ow! Sauce 
has not only emerged as a true shutdown corner in his league as rookie. Marissa, has he been a mayor of Shutdown City? Four times. Yep, he's out here trolling his opponents and their fans every week. The cheese head, we all saw that. Alan Lazard, sorry to you. Uh, every time the camera cuts to him and he's making a play, he is talking more trash than Doja Cat did about that Mexican pizza. Did you guys see that Mexican pizza thing that I don't know? Anybody know? Tweet me. Uh, he's the number one graded corner in the entire NFL. That's according to PFF. And I think he might run away with Defensive Rookie of the Year. What do you think Sauce thinks about getting the do he likes to He likes to talk to us on our Twitter and Instagram. You think he'll like this? You think? I, I hope he does. Taylor Few will let us know if he DMs her. I thought it was Few the whole time. It so shows what I know. Okay, and our next award go uh, is who? the Dwayne The Rock Johnson Award. <laughs> oh, is this like a glow-up award or like what? Okay, okay. Let's see what this one is. This goes to the player who we are so excited to see mature. Great on the left. <laughs> I love a turtleneck, I love this whole look, but to see him sort of grow and mature and try new things and not be seen as a guy who's talking about what, these, what they smell like and what The Rock is cooking and all of that, like a nice transition into uh, just like a different plane and that's what we're looking for. Uh, just like this guy. So we saw him thrust into the national spotlight at 18 and continue to blossom before. The Dwayne, The Rock Johnson goes, and I wasn't talking about Dwayne there, I was talking about the winner of this award and I know who it is. Oh, I know who it is. Marissa. Marissa, come here. Just come, just enjoy it. <laughs> Tell him who the winner is. Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts! <laughs> the winner. We saw him on, yeah, we did, we saw him on at a young age, young stage, but national, I mean, big stage rather. National championship as a freshman in Alabama. Being forced to transfer to Oklahoma. Becoming a controversial second round pick of the Eagles. And now in his third year, year number three, Marissa McBride leading the team to an undefeated 8-0 record, sitting along a top rolling at the top of the NFL standings. And he's increased his passer rating over 20 points. He's throwing dots out there. And he is the engine behind this juggernaut that is the Philadelphia Eagles. So Eagles fans, uh, I mean, you just gotta hope that what's happening in the transition is a little more Moana and a little less the Tooth Fairy. Anybody seen the Tooth Fairy? No. No one's seen the Tooth no, Fairy. Exactly. That's where we want. You've seen it? Yeah, nobody's seen the Tooth Fairy. But this is what we want uh, out of Jalen. Uh, and then we have a Fan's Choice Award, of course. <laughs> We're like the hip. What are we doing? Comeback Player of the Year. That's what we want from Twitter? I think it's a great idea. Who is the Comeback Player of the Year? Who's having a comeback right now? Brendan Fraser. Brendan Fraser's having a fun comeback. Um, Low waist jeans are making a comeback. I did a Pilates class yesterday because I heard low waist jeans are coming back. What else is coming back? Lohan, Lindsay Lohan has two, two movies. The New York Post, that's something mean to say about her, but what else is new about the New York Post? Uh, we have Levante David on the show before he heads over to Germany for the international series. If you've got him, love him. Future Hall of Famer, Levante David next. You set for your trip, um, because, and I, I learned all about Germany. I don't know if you've ever been okay. there before. Which teammate would you pick as your beer guzzling partner? Now, Tom can throw him down. Hey, listen, listen. I can't just pick one person if you say that. It's a bunch of dudes. Go. Welcome back to the Up and Adam show. Mr. Todd Bowles, excited, of course. That's Tom Brady not yelling, not throwing said Microsoft surfaces. And that is a win for Tampa Bay. They are sitting there pretty. The rest of the NFC South, L's all around. So who's going to stop Tom Brady in this division? Is this a turnaround? They've got a big game this weekend, of course. Uh, overseas in Munich. Maybe we'll do our show from Munich one time. I don't think we can be trusted. <laughs> I don't know if this group of cast, cast of characters will be trusted, but then they're like, maybe we'll send you to the Derby. And I'm like, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> but I'm here for it, but a terrible idea. Uh, but we got to sit down and, and spend some time with Levante David, who, future Hall of Famer, such respect for players, such a leader in that locker room, I believe unheralded on a national level. Uh, and we caught up ahead of this huge game where he has to stop Geno Smith and company. Take a look. Huge win, my friend, over the defending Super Bowl champs. Saints lose, Falcons lose, Carolina loses. Let's get a Buccaneers vibe check. Uh, how are we feeling? Yeah. We just needed to win. You know, obviously, you know, with the three-game skid we had, losing three in a row, it wasn't a good feeling, wasn't a good taste, and I'm out. 
it definitely was a, a good feeling, you know, to finally get a win and uh, change the, you know, the, 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 the dynamics in the locker room. Change the stats that you see. I'm hearing that and I'm hearing turning point. I'm hearing Tom Brady uh-huh. slamming that table and I just have a weird feeling about this team. That was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. How much more meaningful was it coming off a players only meeting that I hear you were a keynote speaker in? Uh, it, was, it was real good. You know, um, kind of makes you feel like your message was received in a sense. But, uh, you know, just a message that needed to be delivered, you know, just trying to get a feel of everybody, just trying to, you know, check the temperature of everybody, make sure everybody goal is still intact. You know, um, just me as a leader, you know, just trying to keep everybody upbeat, keep everybody positive and let them know, you know, the thing is far from over. You know, it didn't, didn't start the way we wanted it to start. Uh, but uh, like I always say, man, we got a lot of football left and I got a lot of confidence in the guys in the locker room. Yeah. So take me, I've never been in a players only meeting, of course, who, I need to know more about them. Cause everyone says, oh, they had a players meeting, blah, blah, blah. Who decides that you're having one? Is it like a, an email Zoom link? Or is it like a group text? Like, yo, meet me for protein shakes by the bleachers after practice. Like, how does it go down? Nah, it really is just random. You know, just random. You know, you just, you know, some things not going good. You just grab a bunch of people. You know, you could talk to everybody, you know, personally. You could talk to everybody all together. And uh, that's what we try to do, man. We call ourselves brothers, and that's how brothers act. It clearly had an effect on your little brother, Devin White, because, yeah. I mean, how good must it have felt to watch him ball yeah. against the Rams? It's always good, man. He knows he's a great player. I tell him he's a great player. So you can't let that outside stuff mess with you, man. You know, uh, obviously the message was received, so he definitely uh, wanted people to know that he's still Devin White. Me being 11 years in the league and dealing with a lot of things that I dealt with, you know, I just try to, you know, just try to teach him and uh, just try to let him know how to deal with certain things. I think yeah. I'm doing a pretty good job at it. Uh, I feel like he's uh, taking it really well. You are. You can tell. And the, and the difference from a week from before the Rams game to what we saw mm-hmm. against the Rams, and I'm sure what we'll yeah. see this weekend against the Seahawks, it, you have a lot mm-hmm. to do with that. I hope you give yourself credit because your, your teammates – certainly see it and they speak highly of you but you my friend specifically you lead i do even know this you lead all active players in solo tackles did you know that no i did not know that you do (laughs) you do with 900 908 solo by yourself you do it alone levante david the do everything linebacker doing it for tampa there's someone on your team on offense we can't avoid here in this conversation he's been doing it for 20 years and it's tom brady Mm -hmm. And you've spent yeah. like three seasons with him now, I think. What's the, mm-hmm. the one most important lesson that you've learned from him directly or just being around him? Just always being positive. He's a very positive guy. Always encouraging. You know, he's never down. You know, uh, just having that competitive nature. You see the stuff that goes on, you know, on the sidelines, or whatever. But after that, you know, he's back positive, back being himself. And uh, it just encouraged him to see. You're just trying to watch him from afar and just see how he carries himself and uh, just see how he handles adversity. And, uh, you know, so far, so good. Yes. There are some Microsoft surfaces, those tablets, that yeah. would say, Levante, my life was lost. I was in the hospital. I'm a Microsoft service. <laughs> I was in the hospital for three weeks after Tom threw me. But you're yeah. saying, are you saying that there's these moments that are incredibly competitive but they don't matter people want to say like he's yelling at people he's but it's yeah. really not how it's taken by teammates right it's not it's not taken that way you know it's in it's a competitive edge that we all have yeah and uh you know when he's getting after with people you know shoot i get after with people too so uh, i just don't get captured doing it so uh it's just a, a competitive <laughs> thing you know what i'm saying uh, everybody receives it well and uh it just uh, a will a will to win and that's what he has it was uh-huh. you and Bobby Wagner drafted yeah. the same year, played yeah. against each other Sunday. I'm looking for footage of the, you know, yeah. this is like the perfect jersey swap, dap up scenario. Two yeah. studs, two future Hall of Famers. I was yeah. scouring the internet. Did y'all not swap jerseys? We swapped jerseys already when he was in Seattle. So oh. uh, we did that before. Yeah, but uh, we send each other encouraging messages throughout the and stuff like that. So uh, Bob is a great dude, man. And uh, he definitely got who, who motivates me. We motivate each other to keep this thing going. 
Okay, so your next game, let's look ahead here. You're going up against yeah. the Seahawks who are fire right now. Speaking of Seattle, yeah. it's in Germany. Yeah. I want to get you set for your trip. Um, because, and I, I learned all about Germany. I don't know if you've ever been okay. there before, but I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you a scenario and you have mm -hmm. to pick a teammate that you're gonna do that scenario with, okay? And you can't pick okay. Devin. Okay, I can't pick Devin. <laughs> can't pick Devin. Okay. <laughs> all right. you're, on this, you're on this long plane ride over. You have to uh -huh. pick one teammate to sit next to and control the music. Who are you picking and what are you listening to? I'll probably pick Carlton Davis because we're from the same neighborhood and like we kind of like some of the same music, Miami music, some of that fast type music. And then we could uh, probably uh, switch it up sometimes. You know, Carlton listens to some old school. He listens to gospel. So uh, we definitely uh, have a, a similar vibe on the music. I love it. I would pick the first, I would pick Todd Bowles. I think he would not talk. I think he wouldn't listen to music. I think he'd be quiet all the time. <laughs> yeah. I, like I love Todd Bowles. He's the best. Uh, that's a, that's a great pick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there's this thing in, I don't know if you're familiar. It's called the Audubon. Okay. And it's this, yeah. it's crazy. I just found right? out. I just like, found out what that was. So what teammate would you want to drive down the Audubon with? I, I'll probably go Leonard. Leonard, Leonard, uh, Leonard kind of was a, a fast driver. He's a speed guy. Sometimes he'd be pulling out at the, uh, at the facility going fast and stuff. So <laughs> I'll probably take, pick Leonard. So what, what, what kind of car? What kind of car y'all driving? What kind of car we driving? Should we drive in a Ferrari? A Ferrari. <laughs> yeah. 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 Leonard Fournette and the Ferrari. That's a good one. Okay. <laughs> so then they have this thing called Oktoberfest. And it's basically like a big party. Beers on beers on beers on yeah. beers. Which teammate would you pick as your beer guzzling partner? Now Tom can throw him down. Hey, listen, listen. I can't just pick one person if you say that. It's a bunch of dudes. Go. I go Vita Vea. I go Pat O'Connor. I go Will Ghosting. <laughs> I go Jamel Dean. Okay. Levante, have you thought about uh, this? <laughs> no, nah, nah, honestly, this is just guys who I've been out with and I know how they get down. <laughs> Vita Vea flew out your mouth. Yeah, yeah, Vita for sure. He's definitely good number one. Uh, I love that. Okay, Germans are also famous for their food. They've got things like this, okay? It's called schnitzel. It's like a pork chop okay. bread. It's the whole thing, right? They've got okay. sausages. They've got pretzel. Who would, who would you eat your way through Germany with? Uh, eat my wit. I should. I'll probably go Vita again. Akeem, Akeem Hicks. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Not Tom Brady. Well, not Tom. Nah, definitely not Tom. You know, definitely Tom may eat that Tom. type of stuff. <laughs> okay, last one. This is later hose, and this is this outfit, right? I'm sure you've seen it before. Uh -huh. Which uh -huh. teammate would be most likely to wear this as their fit and pull it off? Their game day fit. You know, Honestly, I would probably do Pat O'Connor for sure, though. Why Pat? Why is Pat getting all this love in this segment? You know, because it's good. Pat, Pat do a lot of dorky stuff. <laughs> and he, he would do some, yeah, he would do something like that for sure. Uh, so wait, so tell me for real, does this team have any vibe of a, I know you don't want to get ahead of yourself, but does it have mm -hmm. any sort of feeling for the future like you had that year you won the Super Bowl? Uh, Imagine just, right honestly, now. Not really, you know. Uh, you know, like I said, man, we dug ourselves in the hole, so we're just trying to focus on one game at a time right now. Uh, we're not looking ahead; we're just focusing on the right now. We got Seattle. We about to play. Who's been, yeah. like you said, on fire? Got great. Got some great players, and they're doing a lot of great job. You know, as a team. Are you going to be the team that brings this Geno party to an end? Hey, man, we try to. You know what I'm saying? We want to. And uh, we're going to work at it. Levante, yeah. we are such big fans. You are amazing. And we are wishing all the best things for you. Thank you so much for making time. No problem, Kate. Thank you. Go do it. Go get it done. Yeah. Bye, Levante. <laughs> Tampa Bay Buccaneers face the Seattle Seahawks. They're, of course, on their way to, <laughs> to Germany for this one. Uh, we bring in Matthew Hamilton. Uh, we're waiting for Eric Weddle to, to get logged in. I appreciate you hopping on. I know you'll be on later in the show. He's such an unassuming like, uh, future Hall of Famer. I loved my favorite thing. that I mean, there were, that was one of my favorite interviews I ever did. 
and it was last that was minute. Awesome. It was last minute. He last minute said, "Yeah, I have time to sit down." Thank you to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for helping facilitate that, of course. And we all sat for five minutes. Our whole team, like, what do we ask him? What do we ask him? Uh, and and you brought up wanting to bring up Bobby Wagner, which I didn't even think of. And it's so true. And they're both so unassuming, even though they're both wearing those gold jackets at a certain point. I love the respect he has for Bobby. And, and I, can, I can only imagine what those messages share between the two of them. So I thought that really stuck out to me. And he's a little too humble, as a, you know, and he's smiley and he's great. But you, we saw what Devin White looked like week eight. We saw what he looked like week one through seven. And then you saw there's a player meeting. We all hear that Levante David is a spokes, the person making that happen uh, and, and loud, and then you saw it on the field. So he deserves mucho credit. He really does, and that's that was one of the byproducts of Brady going there. Like he's been so great for so long since he broke into this league, yeah. And he didn't really get recognized for it, and that was one of the cool things. Brady going there shed some light on a lot of other guys that deserved a lot of credit, and I think he was at the forefront of that he's as you talked about in the interview leading the league in solo tackles yeah. um among active players so he's been doing it at such a high level for such a long time it's awesome to see him getting more of the spotlight now and as he said such yeah. an unassuming personality but also so, so much fun there and yeah what he's meant to that entire defense i'm just looking like his twitter and i think this is a, he has 2687 followers it's not verified i mean <laughs> the bucks need to spring for that eight dollars thing don't get me started on I actually don't even know what's going on there I'm too I don't even know but uh, but but he's so honest but he's so great and we loved having him on the show uh, and I love this next guy coming up on the show it is the the, the bearded one the, the guy whose beard your beard aspires to be Matthew Hamilton there's a gritty feeling in the air here he is Eric Weddle joining us after this one of the best safety he's gonna put on the safety goggles and look at matchups for week 10. A Super Bowl champion in our midst, Rams. Those Ravens who look so, are the Rams winning the Super Bowl? This year, they might. A Chargers superstar as well. Best friend to somehow every guest that comes on the show and always wants to like to ask, to ask Weddle questions through them. I'm just here to ask Weddle questions for Danny Woodhead and Andrew Whitworth. Here he is, Eric Weddle. There he is. What's going on? What's going on? Uh, lots is going on. Oh, my goodness. It's week, week 10. There's a game in Germany this weekend. Aaron Rodgers is throwing interceptions up against uh, the Lions, the, the lowly Lions yeah. defense. So we have a lot to get to. And we you, my lot. friend, are taking over as head coach of your local high school team next year. The big NFL news, of course, was the surprise Jeff Saturday <laughs> hiring yeah. by the Colts as an interim guy, a guy with no college, no NFL coaching experience, but he says he's a leader of men and he wants to do it. <clears throat> Here's my question for you. Let's say the Rams job opens up tomorrow. You get the call from, I guess it would be Demoff, right, or Les, somebody calling you. Yeah. What are you, what's the first thing that you think? Take me through, like, imagine I'm Demoff saying, Weddle, the coaching job is open for whatever reason. I want you to take it. Yeah, uh, it, it, it would be a big uh, jump, obviously, uh, a commitment. And, you know, like Jeff said, uh, he's not in there to, uh, he, he knows what it's like in the sense of as a player, He's been around it, and he, he knows he's got to go earn the respect of, of the guys. He hasn't been around not in the offseason training camp. So he, he's going to go in there uh, with the approach that I'm going to earn the guys' respect, I'm going to be me, and try to do the best he can. Like, there's a reason why uh, Jim Irsay reached out to him. Mm -hmm. And f for all the – the understanding is it is it the right thing to do is it is it the not is there better qualified guys of course but at the end of the day he's the owner he's going to do what he wants and he feels most comfortable with the guys he knows and trusts and that's jeff saturday so at the bottom line is he's the owner he makes that decision whether he's right or wrong we'll decide that after eight weeks and and maybe it might be the best hire it might not be yeah. but uh 
he does bring a lot of quality. Listen, at the end of the day, head coaches just got to galvanize the units. They got to inspire. They got to manage personalities, right? And and they just got to the, lead the ship. Uh, it's not the X's and O's. It's not all this other crap uh, at times. You just got to lead men. Yeah. And Jeff Saturday said it perfectly. And I think he'll do great because he was a stud player. He... I mean, the list goes on and on. So, right. uh, I, I think it's uh, yeah, I think it's awesome. I, I, anytime uh, any ex players get coaching jobs or head coaching opportunities, they usually do outstanding. So, uh, we'll see what happens. But, yeah. but I love it, and and I think it shakes everything up. It's, it's definitely the players and this coaching staff and this and that, and we'll see. It's an eight game eight game yeah. audition for the for the Colts and everybody else. I didn't ask about Jeff. I asked about you, and you somehow <laughs> turned it into your thoughts on Jeff Saturday, which is incredible. Wow. I will say this, though. Lots of people want you to be a head coach in the NFL, uh, including uh, Jeb Zreback, a friend of the show, who, of course, covers the Ravens for The Athletic. He thinks it's a good idea. Which former Ravens player? I mean, there's a lot of good ones to choose from, and that you would be the best head coach. I'll ask you this. You're saying that the head coach's job is to galvanize men, to be a leader, to manage personalities. You have what it takes. What would you do in that Colts locker room to do that? What would be your first most important thing of business in it sort of getting those guys to buy in? It just gets back to the basics. Why haven't we been successful? And it starts with the O-line and D-line and controlling the run, protecting the football, protecting your quarterback, running the football. I mean, this was the number one Russian team just a year ago. So why, why has that not been the case? And figuring out what what's holding this team up you know like you talk with the leaders on the team talk with uh the guys that you trust within the organization and figure it out and, and yeah. the, the bottom line is just being real and honest with the players when i was a player the coaches i respected most were the ones that were up front with me and <laughs> told me hey if i'm playing like crap eric you're playing like crap you got to pick it up like you're you're the top guy on this defense like you can't have a bad game Right. So let's figure out why are we putting you in bad spots Is it scheme, whatever it is. So as a coach, just figuring it out, figuring out what your team needs and being honest and upfront with them and collaborate, col be collaborative with them. Yeah. Right? It's not just all on the head coach. It's it, it takes everybody. And, and I know the head coach and the stars get the limelight, but it takes all 53. It takes every coach within the organization to ha to be successful on Sundays. It's not just one person and yeah. just understanding that. We had Lara Overton on the show. So she's the the team reporter for the Indianapolis Colts. She's more than that, though. She's a producer. She's really close to the guys in that locker room, the front office all over. And she came on when this happened and, and told us that, you know, I asked her about the shock. Like, are the players shocked? And they said, yes, they were stunned when they benched Matt Ryan. And, of course, even the Naeem Hines trade and then the Frank Reich thing and then now the Jeff Saturday thing. They But they also feel the burden of responsibility. Like, they feel culpable. Sure. They feel like, well, man, if we played better, if we were this, if we were that, none of this would be happening. So I ask you, you know, if you put yourself back in the locker room as a player, how would Eric Weddle, the player, feel about Jeff Saturday coaching him? Because there's also, the, you know, the fact that Jeff wasn't in the building. He was there for a little bit in training camp. But there's a lot of Reggie Wayne. There's a lot of guys who were in the building that, that players might want to have seen. How would, how would Eric Weddle handle or like Jeff Saturday coaching him? The bottom line is it doesn't matter what I want or think or am concerned with. My job is to be great on Sundays mm -hmm. and to try to lead this team. And obviously, the guys in that locker room probably feel that they haven't done a good enough job. So it always comes back to yourself. You look yourself in the mirror and figure out how can I do a better job? How can I better? How can I prepare better? How can I be a better teammate? How can I uh, make sure on Sunday that I do everything throughout the week, that I play great on Sunday. It doesn't matter who the head coach is, quite honestly, to me. I don't need a coach to motivate me and get me uh, ready for the game. I, I just need a guy to, to make sure that the ship's going in the right direction and make great decisions on Sunday and not going for fourth down when we should be punting it or kicking field goals. Yeah. Like That's what I care about. But ultimately, uh, you need a guy, obviously, to lead, lead men. And I think Jeff can do that, and we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, of course, or we'll see what the, the real plans are for this Colts team. Uh, There's a lot. They, they got a lot, <laughs> a lot to look at this offseason, no doubt about it. They certainly I mean, you do. Could even, you could even say, and I know this is wild thinking, right? And, and I'm not saying by this by any means, but you could easily, Ursa could call Jeff and be like, hey, Jeff, hey, Jeff like, we're struggling. 
I just need a guy that I trust to just ride it out. And we need to lose as many games to get the top pick. Like, that could easily be the case as well. Like, we don't know. But, you know, maybe save uh, one of the guys, one of the assistants on staff, yeah. the embarrassment of the rest of the season and actually is doing them a favor. Like, we don't know because we're not in that building. We're not in those conversations. We could all just think about, you know, why is this, why that? But, I mean, that could easily be the case too. But you're not wired that way as a player, right, or as a coach. And maybe Frank <laughs> Reich, is, Frank Reich, I, I don't know him very well, but I don't think he's wired that way. I'm no, sure he's he would, definitely not. He would not have been on board with that sort of a philosophy. No, well, Frank was go gone at this point. I'm saying her say to Jeff Saturday. Yeah. But and I'm saying, I, why is listen, Frank? Why is Frank gone? All I'm saying, if you're saying that this we're, we're struggling, and this is the plan potentially, we need somebody to carry that plan out. Is Frank Reich going to carry that plan out? Likely yeah, not. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I listen. I'm just throwing another yeah. another no, like dart it. at the board to just get people talking because we don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows, right? And. You know, well, we're going to find out after eight games if, if it was a good decision or not. And they're going to move forward. And all of us talking heads is really available because we don't make any decisions. Yeah, and Ursay wants, he, you know, people want to say what they want about Ursay wants to win. And Ursay knows yeah, that, it's, that it's time, time is of the essence. For with sure. This I mean, look at the quarterback, quarterback mm -hmm. carousel since Luck uh, decided to retire. I mean, it's not, it's not the lack of effort, just the decisions they've made haven't been. I mean, outside of Phillip Rivers, that was a one successful season yeah. uh, with the quarterback carousel, which is unfortunate. But. Anytime we give Phillip Rivers love on the show, you know I love that. All right, tonight yeah, we've Phillip got feels. <laughs> tonight we've got Falcons Panthers, and let's just be honest, this is a rematch of one of the best games of the season. DJ Moore's Seriously. touchdown. There's the controversial celebration penalty. Atlanta's win in overtime. I hope it's a high-scoring game, but I'm going to ask you our safety of record on the show to give us a closer focus on the game. Whoa, Safety goggles. What's a matchup you're looking closely at? Safety goggles. I'm looking at how is the Carolina defense going to minimize the opportunities of their great tight end pits. Uh, he is one of these new generation type tight ends. They're athletic, they're fast, they're big. Uh, electric, right? And if I'm Atlanta, I'm trying to get this guy at least at the bare minimum 10 touches a game because wow. of the mismatch he presents every snap of the game. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how they match up with him. He had 80 yards, a touchdown in the first game, a couple of explosive plays. I, I mean, at any time you can get this guy a matchup, whether it's third down and the ISO off the ball, uh, an option route, or those overs, those crossers, those those routes that are run away from the defender, that's that's their best option. So he needs to be getting the ball, and Carolina knows that. So I'm interested to see if they've got a good plan for him. If not, he can wreck the game. I mean, he's he's too big, too fast, too explosive uh, to not have a plan for him every single snap. Feisty young defense on the Carolina side. They've got something to prove. Kyle Pitts up against those linebackers. Let's see what happens tonight. Uh, who do you think wins? Panthers, Falcons? Uh, I got the Falcons. They kind of they gave that game away uh, last week against the Chargers. I think they're, they're hovering around mediocre to good. Yeah. At times they're good, and at times they just aren't there. So I think uh, it's a, obviously a division battle. I think it's going to be a close game, but I think Atlanta's the better team. Carolina's going in the wrong direction, which is unfortunate. I, lo I love Coach Wilkes yeah. and, and the job he's trying to do there, but they're just not very good. Uh, you're very good, though. We have, I love that safety goggles. Thing. Marissa's killing it. I loved that. But now we have to do the serious business of what we dun, come dun, here dun. to do. It's time to get down and gritty. <laughs> the grit list. All right, yes. last week. Last week, I know, I guess people are getting up war, so I'm thinking maybe halfway through the season okay. we scrap the okay. first half and get a new list in there because they don't, they, they just think <laughs> my, my guy, my, my, my top three isn't good, en isn't good enough for everybody else. They want change where I'm a routine type guy, but we're going to go with, we got Mac here uh, coming on the sideline, coming out. He dropped in coverage for one which you don't really like to see with Mac, but he's a freak of nature, so he can't do that every once in a while. And the guy literally just takes the ball from Drake London on the sideline. Uh, just an impressive man, grizzly bear type play. And that's just grit. Like, I mean, the dude that's just- That's just grit. I mean, seriously, like, how do you just let the ball get ripped like that? Drake, <laughs> you gotta be tough on that. You gotta be tough on that. <laughs>
Number two, we got Jason. I mean, my Whoa. guy, Marmar. I love <laughs> my guy. Yeah, I got him as a rookie in Baltimore. I love him, and he is one of the most physical dudes in the in the game as a corner. But my guy, Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill did this to me my last year in uh, in Baltimore. I came up on a zone raid. He didn't really run me over. He just outran me to the sideline. I just didn't have the the pep in my step as a 34 year old. But Taysom Hill is grit <laughs> to the T. He grit plays all tea. over the place, and and he just trucks Marmar like that. Sorry, buddy. And we got Samuel right here. Curtis Samuel with, with oh. thrown into triple coverage. I'm not sure what oh. Heineke is doing here. A terrible decision. But he gets helped by the ref. I think I the know. ref is more gritty on this than the actual <laughs> catch for actually being a bonus uh, a, a offender for the, for, the red, for the Redskins. Yeah, they are the Redskins. They'll always be the Redskins to me. And, uh, yeah, make a catch. Harrison Smith, he's not trying to get P.I., so he kind of lets up. He what a probably catch. Thought, he probably thought his partner was going to pick it, which is just crazy. So it, these uh, do not make my top three. I'm sorry. Oh! My top three stays the same, and I, 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 it's unfortunate to say this will be the retirement of the first half three. Wow. Yeah, we're going to move on to uh, a new top three next week. So who knows? This is the new week 10 will be a new grit list top three, and we'll see who makes it. Very excited. And if you guys see anything tonight's game, it could happen. Kyle Pitts could have a gritty play, like you're saying. He, could. he only he had two could. grabs last he week could. in a loss, so let's figure it out. Kyle Pitts, uh, tweet us at Up and Adam Show and let us know. And, uh, and Eric, we just really appreciate you. are the best. Thank you so much. And we have a new grit list. And, I mean, that ref was crazy. What was that ref doing? It, was, it was just com comical <laughs> that a ref screws up a play like that for a, I mean, typical. But, I mean, the ref. Good for Curtis Samuel. We'll be back hey. after this on Up and Adams. Thank you, Mr. Weddle. Get back to cut making avocado toast this you morning. Sprinkle of sea salt, Himalayan variety. All right, we'll be back. Uh, we got some DF. Yes, guys, to get in your FanDuel Sportsbook lineup next. Gearing up for another week of college football, you can get in on the action and win part of a $20,000 prize pool. It is part of Twisted Tees College Football Picks Contest. It is free to enter. You'll make six picks, earn points for each. Sign up today at FanDuel.com. I got some DF yes for you right here. Let's take a look. Uh, these are guys you plug into your lineup. Uh, and let's take a look. Justin Fields, all the rage. Man, ride the hot hand. He's worth paying for. Lions on the docket. Tony Pollard crushing it lately. Love this value. Who does he have? The Packers. You can definitely run on them. Mooney at six. 6200. I like stacking Mooney and Fields against the Lions defense. Do it. Dalton Schultz, uh, impressive breakout year, you know, slowed by some injuries, dropping his value. So I'd say you take advantage of it. Six catches for 74, and he's coming off a bye. We'll be back after this little, little hammer time. Do, 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 do. Uh, I can't touch this. What am I doing? All right, we'll be back. Matthew Hamilton. Is it? All right, whatever. We got this. We got more on Josh Allen after this. Oh, yeah. Can't touch this. Big time matchup this weekend. Seven and one Vikings visiting the six and two Bills. All eyes on Josh Erland's elbow, ulnar, collateral, something. But even before he suffered the injury against the Jets last week, he was having some uncharacteristic struggles. So we bring in Matt Hamilton for another round of Hammer Time. Do 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 do. There you go. Yeah, you were right last time when you were bumping. That's the song. Uh, okay. Did the Jets expose something seriously? <laughs> In the Bills' yeah. offense last weekend, you'd be worried about. Well, there was something interesting that I noticed because one of the biggest keys to Josh Allen's success that we've seen over the past couple of years has been his ability to move and manipulate defenders. Like this play, I'll show you right here. These pump fakes have been have become such a signature part of his mm -hmm. game, and with his arm strength and mobility, defenses get especially jumpy and tend to bite at his first movement, trying to make plays on the ball. But I want to show you what the Jets did on Sunday that was a little bit different. Okay. We'll start with the first interception that he threw in that game to Jordan Whitehead. And you'll see the Jets are playing a, a cover three here. Mm, this is the second play. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh. But here, this is the, this is the, inter okay, Sorry, here we go. It, all good. Um, this is uh, a cover three from the Jets down in the red zone. The Bills are going to roll Josh Allen out, okay. get him into space, which is where he's especially dangerous. But I want you to watch how this play is out. So watch, he gets his head around, yeah. he spots right away, Dawson knocks. He has some leverage on the flat defender, Whitehead. 
but he knows he's going to need a little bit of time to get there with the Jets getting a jam on him. So look, his eyes come to the middle of the field. That's okay. just to try to move the defense, get these Jets defenders to drop off a little. Look, he's even pointing downfield to try to move those defenders. And look, the first time he looks at Dawson Knox, right. that ball is already about to come out of his hand. He didn't account for Jordan Whitehead staying in that flat, not reacting Oof. to the pointing, to him putting his eyes downfield. He never saw him there. He just expected Whitehead to move as he tried to manipulate the defense. And we saw it again later in that game. The Jets playing cover two here. You'll see Sauce Gardner dropping to the flat there at the bottom of the screen. He's the one that ends up coming up with this interception. The Bills run a little route combo here to try to play with him. Gabe Davis is running the go route. He's got uh, and. James Cook is running to the flat. Right. They're going to try to use James Cook to hold Gardner in place so Allen can hit that hole shot. And look, he's pumping. Everything says he's going to throw this ball to James Cook. Every other defender in Sauce Gardner's position is breaking on James Cook, hmm. trying to get a hit in on him, trying to break Oof. it up. Instead, Gardner just stays in his drop. He knows Allen's going to try to hit that hole shot, so he keeps dropping, gets into that passing lane, and comes up with the interception. And we haven't really seen defenses do this. Gardner knows most of the time Josh Allen's first move that he shows you yeah. is going to be something to try to move he's you out of the way. You. so he can Exactly. He's going to try to get you out of the way so he can do what he ultimately wants to do, which is take a shot downfield. So... I think it's a it's more about the Jets and their discipline as a defense than it was about Josh Allen. But it's a, yes, exactly. It's a lesson going forward, I think, for defenses as they prepare for Josh Allen. Don't take the bait. Stay disciplined. Vikings can be disciplined. What do you think of this game? I think it's going to be interesting. I know up front, I think the Vikings can mimic what the Jets did as far as being able to get pressure with four or five, keeping guys in coverage to account for those Bills receivers. But I don't know if the secondary is good enough. Yeah, 27 just, this year. Exactly. So I think um, I, I think they might struggle in the secondary. I still like, given the elbow injury, the 40, the total's 43 and a half. I think I'd lean towards the under here with that. The under for Matthew Hamilton. That's been such an incredible breakdown. I got to tell you, Brian Barton, who, of course, is a huge Bills fan, is like, ugh, like he's act literally making noises while you're showing those interceptions. Uh -uh. <laughs> but you're showing the, the lesson that I just learned is when you're on defense, Vikings, be patient. Be patient exactly. and, you know, and let him show you what he wants you to do and then don't let him do it. Matthew Hamilton with Hammer Time. Dun, 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 dun. Mm-hmm. <laughs>